Okay, so this is the uh, presentation uh, for information on our HE conservation environment programs um, at Bishop Burton College. Um, we also have programs running at uh, Rise Home as well. Um, so my name is Chris Scott. I'm a program leader for the HE and Conservation Environment programs. Uh, those are my uh, that's my email there. Um, so if you have any queries um, about this. Um, this presentation on the programs, um, then you can email me on christopher.scott1 at bishopburton.ac.uk. As soon as you walk in, nothing can really prepare you for the adventure you're about to embark on. Challenge yourself. Discover what life has to offer. Experience the difference of doing your degree at Bishop Burton College. It's classrooms without walls. It's hands-on. Getting out and looking in. Learn without limits. Open days are happening now. Visit bishopburton.ac.uk. Okay, so that's a little insight, a little bit of context there to um, Bishop Burton College. Um, you'll have seen there that we have um, quite a large estate um, at, the, uh, at the college, which we make full use of um, on the conservation environment programs. Uh, and we have um, similar opportunities um, at the Rise Home uh, campus as well. Okay, so just a little bit about our um, uh, programs that we do run um, a little bit more detail on that we have the foundation degree um, so this is level four and level five um, so kind of equivalent to the um, first two years of a degree um, but you'll leave um, after that with um, a level five qualification in either wildlife and conservation management or ecology and environmental management um, but then you're welcome to come back and join us um, for the uh, BSC uh, Wildlife and Conservation Management top up or the Ecology and Environmental Management top up. Uh, that would top your level five up um, to a level six um, honours degree. There's the opportunity to, uh, to gain that. Um, so um, depending on what route you want to take, um, uh, you can leave with a full uh, BSc honours degree at the end of your programmes. In terms of entry requirements for the programmes, um, and this is uh, across all the FDSC programmes for environment and conservation, um, you would need a minimum of 80 UCAS points um, or equivalent qualifications, um, so such as um, level, uh, well, that would be through your A-levels and level three extended diploma, um, or we may take into account um, sort of life experience uh, and so on for um, students that are coming from a, a non-traditional route. Um, you would also need your um, grade C or four um, at GCSE uh, sort of English language um, or uh, an equivalent qualification um, there. Um, and there's a little bit more detail um, there about if your English is not your um, first language. Um, students with an appropriate HNC may be able to apply directly to, um, to year two. Um, so you may want to consider that if you do have an HNC in a relevant qualification. Uh, entry requirements then um, for BSc top-up programmes. Um, so as this is a top-up to a level six qualification, uh, we uh, would ask that you have a relevant level five qualification. Um, uh, this is important, um, not only in terms of your degree classification, but also in ensuring that you are in the best place possible to actually achieve um, at the end of that BSc top-up programme. Um, You'll need an appropriate uh, academic reference. Um, okay, again, um, we may consider um, uh, non-traditional um, uh, routes in. Okay, so if you don't exactly have a relevant level five qualification or you're not sure if it's relevant, um, then please still get in touch with us um, and we'll see if we can um, 
we can accommodate you onto the program. Um, you may be asked to uh, complete an entry task um, for both the FDSC and the BSC uh, entrance if you're coming from a non-traditional um, background uh, and we may have to um, map across some of your previous qualifications to make sure that they um, do have equivalence um, with what we would normally ask you for. Um, Again, just some uh, detail um, uh, there about um, uh, if English is not your first language, um, then um, there's some details there about how we would um, look at that. Okay, I guess the main thing with entry requirements is if you don't quite fit the um, uh, the qualifications that are up there, um, then uh, or you're not sure, um, then please get in touch with us uh, and discuss with us, um, you know, how if we can um, uh, give you entry onto the program. Okay, um, I'll come on to um, the uh, foundation degrees and the BSCs and what they actually involve in a little bit more detail in, in a moment. But um, first of all, I just want to give you a bit of an insight into um, what a kind of sort of typical student week would look like. This is on the full time program. Um, we do have part time routes available. So again, if you would like to sort of study part time, um, then please get in touch with us for some more um, details about that and what sort of commitment that is. Um, for full time students, we, we generally um, go um, or give advice to um, to students in terms of the commitment in terms of hours per week because um, we often get that asked that question um, a, a good sort of rule of thumb really is that you will need to treat it as a, as a full-time job um, so um, you've got 16 hours per week of contact time approximately um, but outside of those hours we would expect you to be getting on with research um, uh, for the FDSC programmes, you will have uh, work placements um, uh, and also obviously sort of completing your um, assignments and things like this. So it is a full time um, commitment. So you need to think about um, what hours you've got free um, and you know how much you can um, uh, realistically um, commit to. Okay, um, so the um, there's three to four sessions per day, one one to two hours per session. Okay, um, at the moment we're running that as uh, two days per week. Um, uh, that may change, um, but that's that's how we're running that at the moment. Um, uh, and those are kind of quite full days. Um, so we've we've we've. You know, there, there will be um, uh, sort of full, um, full days of, of contact time that you're in um, college. Um, for the BSc programmes, um, slightly less contact hours a week. And the main reason for that is that um, uh, the equivalence of two of your modules um, is um, a dissertation. Um, which is um, uh, an independent piece of study. So there's less lecture time, but more um, expected in terms of uh, independent um, study there. Okay, um, so again, two to three sessions per day on one to two hours um, per session there. Okay, so in terms of what else you might be uh, doing, um, for the FDSC, we do um, require you to do a work placement and that's um, uh, um, at least 76 hours uh, of work placement um, completed at each level. So if you're on a full-time course, generally that works out as doing 76 hours in the first year, 76 hours in the second year. Um, at level four and level five uh, and there's a list there of some of the organizations that previous students have gone to volunteer uh, well to carry out their work placements there um, generally they're volunteering there um, a lot of the time already and um, so they're able to make use of, of, of contacts that they already have and, and placements that they already have um, and um, uh, but if you are um, unsure about you know 
where you might go for your work placement that's something we can help you out with um, as well um, so we have a range of uh, sort of connections with a range of, of different um, organizations um, uh, locally to both um, Bishop Burton and Rise Home um, that we can um, put you in touch with um, and that have taken um, sort of students before um, there's no requirement for um, a work placement on the top up, um, but we do recommend very strongly um, that students are doing some sort of voluntary work um, uh, as they're completing their studies and uh, quite a few students on the FDSC um, continue on their work placement if that, even after they've completed the 76 hours. Um, volunteering, work placements and so on are a key part of um, gaining a place uh, in the industry so um, we really do recommend that as, as, as a way forward it gives you that experience um, it enables you to make contacts within the sector um, get to know people um, and it also demonstrates that you know if somebody does employ you that you can uh, enter the um, that, that particular job um, and um, uh, get on with it and, and know what you're doing to a large extent um, so um, so yeah we recommend some, some voluntary work it also gives you an insight into the uh, into the sector as well um, to, to check it's the, you know it's the right one for you and the different opportunities that are available within it um, and if you are thinking of uh, doing a course with us starting a course with us in September um, then I would recommend that you um, you seek out um, work placements or volunteering opportunities um, before then um, that can be a little di bit difficult at the moment um, with um, uh, restrictions that are in place um, around covid um, but um, we, we would recommend that you um, that you do that as, as things start to ease on that um, trips and activities then um, just some examples of some of the trips and activities we've taken part in um, we will try and get you out as much as possible um, to um, various um, sites um, talking to site managers people in, involved in the sector um, they'll come in and do sort of guest speaker slots and so on um, so there really is an opportunity to work with and to talk to um, uh, people who are working in the sector and that, that are managing projects and, and so on and this can be a really good way of introducing yourself into the uh, into the sector as well uh, and of course it's quite um, an enjoyable uh, sort of experience to get out and, and do field work and um, and take part in various sort of training opportunities and and, and so on um, so some really in interesting projects that students have been involved in um, in, in previously and and that will continue as, as the uh, um, on, on the program in future years In terms of um, equipment and clothing that you might need, um, obviously um, we may be out and about um, quite a bit, so um, warm waterproof clothing um, and uh, a list of uh, other items there. Um, we generally find that most people um, on the uh, entering the program already have an interest in sort of being outdoors, so have a lot of this uh, equipment already. Um, but again, if you're unsure about what you might need and so on, um, then we can um, uh, we can talk to you about that and, and recommend some some things um, that you might uh, need to get um, and perhaps suggest a few places to actually go to, to get those. Um, Binoculars and hand lenses um, are, um, are a really sort of uh, useful um, addition. Um, um, and although they're not absolutely essential, um, then we would strongly recommend that you have your own of those. We do, we are able to supply them through our labs, um, but it's generally best if, if students have those, uh, have their own. Um, and that enables you as well to um, uh, to do work outside of college so to build your skills um, and, and get out to um, do things like um, identification skills and so on in your own time um, if you've got your own equipment that's a lot easier so um, so we do recommend that you have your own um, sort of basic kit as it were 
Um, obviously stationary and key texts. Um, so we will let you know um, once you've um, kind of, sort of applied to the course and been accepted, um, then um, we will um, give you some information around um, sort of key texts you might need. Um, and um, for, um, uh, for analysing data, um, we recommend the SPSS statistics software licence, um, which at the moment is actually free from our online shop. Um, so, um, so you can download that from there once you've actually enrolled onto the onto the programme. And you won't generally need that until level five and level six um, anyway. Um, for the um, Ecology and environmental management, because much of that program is based on freshwater studies, um, we would recommend um, uh, waders um, at the um, at the FDSC stage, and pretty much essential for the BSC stage. Um, uh, you may want to consider them uh, for wildlife conservation management as well, if your studies uh, around dissertations and independent projects and so on. Um, if you want to focus on um, freshwater habitats. Um, um, so yeah. Okay, just some other additional costs that may be involved in then. Um, we um, will aim to put on as many sort of trips and visits as we can. Generally those are free, um, but there may be costs for entry on certain sites. Um, and also if we do um, a study store tour um, which is a um, kind of more of a residential um, uh, visit so um, so there may be some costs involved in that which we can let you know about nearer the time um, also there may be a cost associated with your work placement you may have to get some additional equipment such as steel toe cap boots for example um, and also travel costs as well are important to uh, to include um, You'll have um, the, um, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll graduate um, and um, uh, you will need to um, bear in mind the cost of the sort of formal dress graduation ceremony and everything and the costs around that. Um, and IT facilities are available on site, but we really do recommend that you have your own laptop and you've got decent internet access at home. Um, so if you are um, looking at that and thinking that's an awful, um, that's, a, that's an awful lot to, to kind of sort of pay out and you're not really sure um, about sort of affordability, um, then please um, speak to our student services department about um, uh, extra bursaries and um, support that's available with costs um, from the college. Um, uh, and that may be able to help you out. Okay, um, as far as um, uh, future paths and careers then, um, we have uh, obviously the Wildlife Conservation Management Program and the Ecology Environmental Management Program. Um, we often ask, um, you know, what's the difference between the two? Um, I, the difference between the two really is the change of emphasis in where this might lead you on to. Um, there is some crossover there. So, um, so for example, you could um, be on the Wildlife Conservation Management Program and end up in eco ecological consultancy or vice versa um, with, you know, with, these, um, uh, with these job roles and um, careers paths. Um, but it's more the, um, the sort of emphasis that's placed on these actually within the programs. Um, so wildlife conservation management is uh, for those that are uh, looking at reserve warden, um, landscape project manager, um, education officer, thing, uh, careers such as this, where you're very much uh, sort of engaging with the public, um, running reserves, running um, hands-on um, uh, conservation projects um, and, uh, and managing those. Um, so, um, so there's a list of bodies that you may end up um, kind of sort of working for there. You can see they're reflecting the ecology environmental management one there because there's similar bodies, there's different roles within those bodies. Um, 
but the ecology environmental management one is um, more around ecological consultancy planning um, policy advice um, and so on um, so it's not as um, the careers that we're looking at there are not as perhaps hands-on um, but are more aimed at sort of planning and um, policy areas um, so the key one there in terms of careers, I suppose, is uh, working for each ecological consultancies. Now that might be for a private firm or it might be within um, a local authority or national agency or, or something um, being an ecological consultant. Um, uh, and with both of these programmes, uh, there's opportunities there to go into um, uh, postgraduate um, uh, study. So in terms of um, the programme structures, um, so if we start off with the foundation degree at level four, um, we have um, again wildlife and conservation management, uh, ecology and environmental management and you'll see here um, that there's some common uh, modules, so flora and fauna identification principles of ecology, academic and professional skills in GIS and employment skills in environment conservation are all common um, to both programmes. Um, and then we have specific programmes, British Wildlife and UK Conservation for Wildlife and Conservation Management and Habitat Man Assessment and Wildlife Legislation in Ecology and Environmental Management. Um, uh, so those are specific to, um, to those programmes. Um, so um, in terms of what these programs entail, um, basically what we're trying to do is give you the basic um, understanding that you need to progress um, onto level five. So um, when we have um, students join us at level four, they come from a range of different backgrounds, with, some with lots of experience, some with little, um, some that have um, completed A levels, some that have completed BTECs, some that are mature learners with life experience. Um, so level four is about giving you the kind of basic foundation really for, um, for your other studies. So uh, what we're trying to do is to give you basic understanding of flora and fauna ID um, and how you would identify um, both plants and animals um, and uh, possibly fungi as well um, in the um, in the field uh, and uh, around classification uh, taxonomy around those different groups. Um, we we'll give you a basic understanding of ecology, um, so the different sort of ecological processes that are involved, such as around food webs, um, uh, relationships between species um, uh, and communities, um, and also um, conservation strategies and so on. So those two link very closely together because ecology informs our conservation strategies. Um, so we're looking at um, sort of thoughts around different. Um, conservation methods that we might use and what might be most appropriate. Um, British Wildlife looks at um, British habitats um, and the wildlife within them and UK Conservation looks at how uh, UK, um, uh, well how conservation is carried out in the UK. So the different organisations, different policies, um, uh, different legislation that's involved in, in that and how it kind of all fits together. Uh, with ecology and environmental management, there's a bit more of an emphasis on legislation itself um, and also um, looking at habitats from very much from a, a, assessing those habitats for their um, habitat quality. Um, so, um, so that's kind of where the difference is really with the um, ecology and environmental management. Um, for academic professional skills uh, and GIS, that's looking at how you can complete assignments um, and um, uh, um, uh, do things like presentations, um, research skills, um, uh, use of various Microsoft um, packages such as Excel and Word. Um, 
uh, but there's also um, uh, the GIS element of that. So GIS is Geographical Information Systems, which is uh, electronic mapping, um, which is becoming more and more important in conservation studies. So um, we'd like to sort of get you started on that at level four. Um, it's a really useful skill to have through the rest of your studies as well. And employment skills um, looks at um, basically how we can boost your employability within the sector. Um, so we go through some generic things like um, uh, job searches and um, presentation skills, uh, interview skills, um, filling out your job applications, um, CVs, um, personal statements, things like this. Um, uh, but also looking at where you might find jobs within the sector as well and action planning to um, uh, to maybe fill some gaps that you might have in your experience and your knowledge and understanding. And then at level five, um, we're looking very much at applying um, the skills and understanding that you've developed at level four. Okay, um, so again, we've got a bit of a split in the um, modules there, um, but some common modules as well. Um, so wildlife management um, is around um, looking at population um, management, um, so population ecology, um, and also how um, uh, activities such as captive breeding and um, rehabilitation where we're releasing animals into populations, um, uh, how that um, can affect those populations and what we need to think about in sort of drawing up conservation and rehabilitation plans. Um, access education interpretation is around public engagement. Um, so um, how do we engage the public? How do we inspire them? How do we educate? Um, so um, maybe looking at um, uh, showing school groups around um, reserves um, uh, and seeking to inspire them or just the sort of general public and how we interpret um, uh, reserves for them. There's also issues around access around that, both in terms of legislation and uh, best practice about how we allow access and what um, rights people have in terms of access to areas. Um, for ecology and environmental management, um, it very much focuses on the ecological surveying side of things, both for fauna and flora. So you'll be taking a, a much deeper look at um, the different techniques that you use standard um, uh, surveying um, methods that are used within the UK um, and they're applicable abroad as well in terms of sort of surveying, surveying techniques. So that might be things like phase one habitat surveys, um, uh, camera trapping, um, uh, uh, common standard surveys for triplex SI sites. Um, so all of those um, different uh, aspects of surveying um, can be covered within those uh, modules, which is again, is really good for your employability. Um, we have a habitat management module, which looks at how to manage various habitats and draw up plans for that. Um, so to create a habitat management plan. Um, you can see there that we have um, GIS uh, included within that as a way of um, actually planning out um, habitat management that we might want to do. Um, we have research design and statistical analysis, um, uh, an independent project which go kind of sort of hand in hand. Um, and the independent project is kind of like a mini dissertation really. Um, so you'll plan a project and carry it out and write it up. Um, and the research design statistical analysis gives, gives you more um, background in actually how to go about that and how to analyze your results um, and write them up. Um, then we have uh, management skills and environment and conservation. And this was really development your review employment skills from level four, um, but looks more at um, project management. Um, and project management is a really important skill um, within environment and conservation. Um, so that's a, a kind of a, a key one for us. Um, and we'll look at things like um, funding um, uh, um, and finance, um, people management, um, managing tasks uh, and resources. Um, so, um, so that's a really kind of, sort of key one um, to include on this particular program. 
And then for the top up programs, um, really a kind of sort of continuation again uh, of applying and um, uh, starting more and more to um, evaluate and analyze um, the various methods included in these different um, sort of topics. Um, uh, and, um, and, and to learn sort of more advanced um, sort of skills, really. Um, so after you finish your level five, um, assuming that you finish that successfully, um, then there is the opportunity to top up to level six um, BSc honours. Um, and you can see that we've got wildlife conservation management, ecology, environmental management routes there as well. Um, so reserve management um, is around um, the uh, um, managing the balance between people and their impacts on sites and the biodiversity and also how we engage with people. So it's kind of a bit of a development of the access education interpretation module from um, level five, but looking perhaps a little bit more um, at the actual planning of interpretive activities um, and how that impacts on um, on the actual reserve itself and the habitats there. Uh, landscape conservation is about land, uh, conservation on broad scales, um, so not only conservation on reserves, but um, how we can seek to um, influence the management of, of land in between um, so that we can um, uh, create landscape scale areas that are really good for conservation uh, and we know um, now it's, it's kind of, sort of been developed over the last um, sort of decade or so um, that landscape conservation is um, a key part of um, how we want to approach conservation in the future um, and you'll see more and more um, roles created for landscape conservation management and uh, and so on and management of these projects uh, management and business and conservation and um, follows on from the management skills um, uh, module from level five um, and again deals uh, more in depth with uh, issues around project management um, for ecology and environmental management then um, again different modules um, Freshwater ecology management and monitoring, we've included that because um, uh, both Rhizome and Bishop Burton College are really good um, areas to, um, to study freshwater ecology and also we know there's a shortage of um, people within the sector um, to take up roles. Um, it's, it's becoming more and more important. Um, uh, freshwater um, habitats are key habitats in terms of conservation um, but we also have issues there around um, things like flooding, um, climate change um, and so on. Um, advanced GIS um, aims to build your GIS skills and again um, there is uh, a lot of call for um, graduates with GIS skills in the jobs market particularly to do with um, ecology um, in terms of mapping habitats, um, looking for issues and, and mapping out how those might be solved as well. Um, and ecosystem services and ecological consultancy, um, similar to the management and business in conservation, but taking a uh, more of an emphasis on the consultancy side of things um, and we'll be looking at um, uh, sort of legislation and um, policy as well um, and the idea around sort of ecosystem services um, covers some aspects of landscape conservation but looks at the opportunities available there for um, uh, for valuing habitats um, for these services that they can um, give to uh, people um, around things such as planting woodlands for carbon capture, for example. Um, and then a common module there is conservation biology. Um, and this looks at key threats to uh, wildlife and biodiversity um, and um, how we might solve those. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much on a, on a global scale. Um, so, um, so this one, um, this module is, um, uh, it takes a broad um, sort of overview of some of those issues uh, and looks to examples from around the uh, around the world to um, to see how they might be solved. Um, and your dissertation, which is uh, 
as I've said, a independent project that you would carry out um, and it's worth 40 credits. So it has double the credit value of the other modules. Um, uh, you will have support on your dissertation. Um, you will have a dissertation supervisor. Um, but you, because you've, you're doing a, an independent project, you will have less contact time on the um, level six project um, to give you time um, to do your private study and, and so on. Uh, but we will support you all the way with that, um, uh, with your dissertation. So what else can you expect? Um, we have uh, excellent resources on site. Um, we have um, uh, our labs, um, which um, you can uh, use and book out, book out equipment from. Um, we have an ecology store for ecology equipment uh, and we're updating that all the time. Um, we have a um, learning resource center, which is our library, which has a range of different resources. So obviously books, um, but also online resources as well. Um, so eBooks, um, access to journals, um, and uh, and so on. Um, we also have IT suites um, where you can come in and uh, and, and study um, uh, independently. Um, and uh, I guess the the main uh, sort of resource that we have is our excellent tutors, um, all of whom have had industry experience um, uh, and academic experience as well so um so we have some excellent um sort of tutors um that have uh, ex a range of experiences of both teaching and the uh, industry background as well um, we will get in visiting speakers um and also um take you out on site as well to uh, to kind of sort of meet people um we have uh, links with local um, uh, groups, um, so Wildlife Trust, um, RSPB, um, Council Departments, um, Ecological Consultancies and so on. Um, so we have a range of people that we can call on to, um, to give advice and, uh, and so on. Um, uh, so yeah, so if you want to find out any more um, about student support, there's a web address there. Um, and generally there's a lot of information around uh, on our um, Bishop Burton uh, website. Um, so, um, so yeah, um, if you have um, uh, any questions, um, if you want to uh, contact me on the, uh, uh, the email address that was given earlier, so that's christopher.scott1 at bishopburton.ac.uk. Um, Thank you for listening.